Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Passionately Speaking. This is our weekly training where we talk about public speaking and how we can use public speaking to grow our business, get our message out to the world, and of course, bring God to more stages. I'm RV Robinson. I'm the master speaker trainer, international speaker and author, and your host today. So again, welcome. I've got another good one for you, just like Steve Harvey always says. And today it's all about your presentation. Let me share my screen. It's all about seven ways of becoming a mind blowing speaker. All right, so hold on just a moment. Let me share. All righty, there we go. Let me start. All right, so today we're going to talk about seven ways that you can be a mind-blowing online speaker and move your audience to action. That is one of the biggest challenges of trying to do what we're used to doing live, but now we come online and we have some disadvantages because we don't have the freedom to walk around. We don't have the ability for someone to see us our whole entire body, not normally. Sure, there's always exceptions, um, raised desks and things like that. But most of the time, it is done in a sitting position. And the speakers, we're just not used to doing that. So how can we be over the top and mind blowing and still create the audience to take action? That's the key. And that's what you're going to learn today. All right, so seven ways to become a mind-blowing online speaker. We wanna, uh, we're gonna start out with an acronym, which if you know me, you know that I love acronyms. So we're gonna use the acronym ACTIONS because that's really truly what we want our audience to do. All right, so audience number one, I'm gonna jump right in. Number one, audience participation. You've got to create in this online world more reason for audiences to participate. So you can see here on the screen, we've got some pretty good looks, but people can be uh, very distracted in this online world. So how do you get them engaged? Ask them to comment in the chat, excuse me, in the chat box. So right now, everybody, in the chat box, just um, put, some, put your name and where you're from, your name and where you're from. And you can ask people to do that and you as the host can see everybody that chats in the chat box. So go ahead and write that in the chat box and you can get your audience to do that too. Next one is use reactions. If you're not sure what the reactions are, the reactions are the little, uh, little things at the bottom of the screen and their little hands, right? Now I'm not, I'm not seeing mine right now only because I've got all of you up, but their little hand, yeah, you're putting them up. Yes, little hands, little thumbs up, that kind of thing. All right, use reactions. Ask people to raise their hand physically because we can see their hands on the screen. So you can actually ask them to interact on the screen. Because sometimes if you as the host are looking to the side, you might miss something if you're looking at everybody from the side. So let me, let me look at my side here, hold on. Okay. All right. Raise hand physically. Nonverbal icons. You have nonverbal icons right next to their name. And again, how, if you're in a meeting, you can click on manage participants. You can see who's in the room and you can see all those little icons. There's yes, there's no, there's a little coffee, there's a timer, there's all kinds of fun things that you can use. But again, people have to all have that up in order to see it, where I find the physical and the reactions work better. Uh, verbal involvement, again, when we open it up, when we're not recording, you can have as much verbal involvement as you want. When I do networking meetings, we have about 15 minutes of verbal involvement and exchange, and we just make it a lot of fun. Now, one thing that I have found, and some of, uh, some of uh, the people that are here are in this more, uh, Monday, um, my Tuesday morning meeting and Lisa was there today. And one thing that I've learned is singing just doesn't work. <laughs> 
over Zoom because everybody's got different internet connections. So if you're um, trying to do singing or you're in singing a song, um, it, it, I would just recommend letting the person, one person sing it and everybody else kind of sing it to themselves because it really uh, doesn't work as well in, um, in this world. <laughs> All right, and then of course there's breakout rooms. Breakout rooms are individual rooms that you can break uh, two, three, four, five people into where they can go and do a deep dive and it, um, you know you could have them meet each other you can do a little mastermind but they're just like breakout sessions like you would do in a real live event where you say grab a couple people get in groups of three and people turn around their chair and talk to the people next to them it's just like that and in zoom we can pick who we want people to be matched up with or you can just let zoom do it i just let zoom do it and just say how many groups you want and how many people in the groups and boom they're all in the groups and people love it because it's just it's just such a neat piece of technology and then of course quizzes you can add quizzes and um i have a quiz for you right now so what is the biggest mistake that you have done yourself as a speaker or have seen done by a business speaker so is it using notes not knowing their message no call to action no stories or all of the above so i'm going to go to my um i'm going to go to my chat hang on one second let me get to my my chat okay hold there we go all right so go ahead and start asking the answering the questions no call to action okay everyone can see it uh e e okay e all right keep going definitely e a lot of e's okay good very good very cool all right very cool let me see no call to action Okay, well, actually, most of you are right, so good for you, because it is E. When you learn how to speak right, which you're all doing, you'll never have to worry about this happening to you, none of them. Never have to, you won't have the need for notes, you'll know your message, because you'll know how much you have to practice. You know by learning, and you're going to learn it again today, that you need to have a call to action, what I call an invitation every single talk even if it's a five minute talk and you must always have stories now in the in the uh, chat box right like if you only have a five minute speech you don't have time for all the four stories that i teach but what is the one story that you must have in every presentation go ahead and write that in the box and richard you probably learned you learned this uh at the one day so you know what it is so what is the one? Okay, good. Professional, personal, uh-huh, right? Funny story. All right, good, right? Excellent, good job, everyone. Right on, and so I don't have that on here because that was an impromptu question, but absolutely, it is your professional story. I used to call it personal, but it's really not that personal story about your, your life, it's that, it's that story that earns you the right to be talking about what you're talking about. It's the story that earns you the right, gives you that right, you set you up as that expert. So great job, everyone. But create some quizzes. All right, number two, camera position friendly. You must be camera position friendly. So what does that mean? Now, again, I'm talking about you being a leader, you speaking, and camera position ready well, let's just talk about cowboys for a minute. How many of you love cowboys, right? Or at least cowboy movies, write that in the chat box. Uh, write down your favorite cowboy. I remember Rawhide, anybody remember Rawhide? Woo, I used to love that show. Anyway, uh, write down your favorite uh, cowboy. I'm not here, I'm not seeing it. Your favorite cowboy or your favorite movie, Wild Wild West, The Lone Ranger, Rifleman. Yeah, you got it, I remember Rifleman. Okay, so the cowboys, they would wear their hats. And if a cowboy wore their hat down and they tilted it and it kind of covered their eyes, what they were communicating was a threat. That they might pull out their gun any second and shoot you. 
So it was very threatening, very, you know, people would want to stay away from them. And then if you wore your hat, hat back, kind of like Oklahoma, oh, Oklahoma is the place to be, kind of like that, well, then you're a goofball, you're aloof, or you're just kind of goofy. So people might not want to approach you either. But when you wore your hat just right, let me move this. When you wore, wore your hat just right, you were called friendly. You were called friendly. You were called handsome, right? And everyone wanted to engage with you. So no different live than on, on online virtual speaking. The difference though is, is that you are magnified. So when you're speaking in a you know, group setting and you're on stage and there's hundreds of people, they're not gonna see your every move or your every action or your every twitch of your eye or, or you're blinking or you're smiling or non-smiling or whatever. But when you're here in this environment, it's magnified. Now you're gonna make mistakes. I've already made them already today. <laughs> but we try to minimize those mistakes and again, be as engaging. And it's hard. It's hard in this kind of an environment because I don't get to see you. I don't get to see your reactions if I'm looking at the camera and not at the side, which you want to do if you're speaking is look directly in the camera. So you want to be in a camera friendly position, which is just right in the middle, looking at the camera, not looking at the side or looking at everybody else. Look directly into the camera and be in the middle of your screen. Number three, you wanna build trust and rapport. And again, that's gonna be a bigger challenge for us as speakers, virtual speakers. So we want all the help we can get. Number one, we want to dress professionally. Absolutely, sometimes people come to online meetings and they tend to um, you know, maybe be a little more casual than they would have if they've gone to a regular meeting, a live meeting, or even speaking. Would you, if you're speaking, are you going to show up as a speaker like you would in a live event? And the answer should be yes. Do everything you can to feel like that professional speaker. Wear your brand color, um, dress. When I did my one day, I wore my brand color. I wore my sparkly shoes. I did everything I could as if I was going to go live and step on that stage and I recommend it and not just for the look since the look is this big but it's for your feeling your feeling of confidence because everything you feel we're going to see again it's magnified it isn't the opposite people think it's the opposite it is not it's magnified you're like bigger than life now some people have pretty Big screen monitors, I just want to give you a heads up on that. Pretty big screen monitors. And you never know if they're going to record it, like I'm recording. All right, so remember when you join a Zoom meeting, you want to look like you, your best. You want to always show up like you're going to be videoed. Always show up like you might end up on YouTube or, or Vimo or any of them. You don't know, so show up. Don't show up like this audio guy. Show up like this video uh, puppy. And I'm showing a uh, picture of two, two puppies. One looks pretty scaggly, and the other one is adorable. So you wanna show up like that. The next one is be excited about your topic. You have to be overly excited now because again, all you have is your voice. You have your voice. You have your facial expressions, and that's all you have. So if you're not used to being real expressive from the neck up, you need to learn because it's what you've got. And we're going to be here for a while. We're not going back. I did a survey today on Facebook. How long, and, and Ed, who's on this call, was uh, responded. But, you know, when are you going to be ready to go to a live event? I have a live event coming up in September and I'm really concerned because I might have to move it to the following year. Because if you're not ready to go, go to a live event today, see, I have to start marketing it today. I have to start marketing it no later than the end of May. That gives me May, June, July, August, and part of September. That's only three and a half months to get 100 people in the room. And how do I get them in the room? I go and speak. Well, if 
people aren't comfortable and not having events, then there's no place for me to go to speak, which means there's no place for me to go to market, which means there's, you know, people aren't going to come or, or there'll be 20 people there instead of 100 people. So I'm uh, considering actually changing that um, and, and pushing it out. And I know people say, well, let's do virtual. Virtual one days are different than virtual three days. Um, so I really love the event. And, and those of you that have come to the Million Dollar Speaker Summit, you write in the chat box why you have to be there because it is an experience. And I can't give you that same experience, that same million dollar. I can give you the same million, million dollar training, but at that event, it goes beyond, right? There's the music and then there's the red carpet and then there's, there's the networking and you know, it's just the sponsors. I mean, it's just my biggest, best event. And you know, I spend a lot of money putting it on because I want to give you an experience. So maybe, I don't know when, but stay tuned. I'll give you a date, probably, probably September, 2021. If the hotel let me extend it that long, we'll see. Look directly into the camera which I already said that. Don't be looking like all of you are over here for me. Uh, if that's a problem for you, move your people directly in front of you. And so you can move people around and then um, look like you're talking to the camera if that helps you. But look directly into the camera. Now, you can look at your notes, of course, you look at your PowerPoint, but I'm talking about don't look over to where the people are because you're, you think you're talking to them, but guess what, they're looking right here. So you must talk directly. Smile even though you can't see people, right? Even though you don't see them. And that's the bummer because live events, we can see people, we can see if they're yawning, we can see if they're excited and they fuel us as a speaker. When there's audience members in the audience that smile all the time and I've, I know of a few of them, I mean, it just like, it's a big pick me up and helps you to go on. You're gonna have to go on without that. You're gonna have to be self-motivated and self-propelled to be excited and bring it all on for your audience. Have fun, you have to have fun and you have to be fun to keep people's attention. And sometimes it might seem a little one-sided, but just know that everybody is having fun as long as you're having fun. If you're excited, they're gonna be excited. Use a professional microphone. I don't have one on today and I'll tell you why. All right, I've got a couple of professional microphones. This is one of them. This is a USB, it plugs directly. And then I've got a big boy a big professional one that I use for podcasting. Okay, why is this not plugged in, you're asking? Because if you plug in a USB, you don't get to see a video. You don't get to see, or hear, you get to see the video, but you don't hear it. So if you're like gonna be all clever, put a video on, and then no one can hear it. And believe me, I learned it the hard way. <laughs> you know, I had a great video and nobody heard it. I'm like, wow. Oh. Okay, so if you, it depends. If you're gonna not use video, use a, a professional microphone. If not, um, if not, um, if you're gonna use video, then don't. All right, but that's not the worst case. But I'm talking about when you're, I'm talking about when you're speaking and you are the speaker or the guest speaker or the leader of your own events. Eliminate all distractions. Unplug your phone. Put the dogs away. Uh, whatever you might have that could distract you, whether you're leading a meeting or not, and uh, get the, you know, put that phone away. All right, so another little quiz. Adding public speaking to my business will provide more visibility for my business. True or false? Go ahead and put that in the chat box. True or false? I'm going to extend my chat box a little bit here. Okay, keep going. All right, good, good. <laughs> I keep making my chat box too big and I can't see it. All right, let me get my glasses on. They didn't make them. Okay, true, for sure, true, 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 absolutely, true, true, true. Oh, <laughs> all right, thank you, Edward. Million Dollar Speaker, fantastic learning, eye-opening experience. Awesome, Renee. Okay, so you're absolutely right. The answer is true. People can't buy from you if they don't know you exist. So even though we're living in a virtual world and it happens so quickly, it's no reason why you can't continue getting your message out there. And I'm here to help you, all right? 
It's important not to stop and not to lose momentum. The enemy wants to silence you. They don't, he doesn't want your message to get out there. So forget about it. Don't give him any credit. Do it anyway. All right. Just learn how to do it and do it and step out there. It's, it's a lot of fun. Number four, don't forget, oops, don't forget the invitation. Don't forget the invitation. You always want to invite people to do business with you, to take the next step with you. So you can invite them. Yes, we can invite people to do something over the phone, to add, to join our text list. We can add, we can tell them to email it. We can do all kinds of different invitations in this world. We can offer something, we can, all kinds of things. So don't not invite them just because you're thinking, oh, how am I gonna sell something from the stage if there's no stage? There's lots of things you can do, but always have that invitation. Five, overwhelming value. You still have to bring it on and bring on the value. So you want to pick your, your, you want them to feel like this, that they've just been overloaded and they've all taken copious notes and they just have so many notes that, that their notebook is, is, you know, full and papers are flying. <laughs> all right. Now here's why I didn't want to plug in my video. All right. Now, normally I want to ask a question. Many of you are here. You're my students and I love you all. So many of you already know the answer to this, but in a 30 minute talk, do I recommend that you use PowerPoint? Yes or no? Put it in the chat box. Put it in the chat box. Excellent. No, right. No, why? All right, CJ, superstar student, why? Right, no, no, right? Because no. you just don't want to fiddle with it don't want to fiddle with it okay true 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 because in a 30 minute video or a 30 minute video in a 30 minute talk when you're the guest somewhere you don't know what the situation can be do you really want to bring a computer and bring a, a screen and all that you don't even know the situation sometimes there is sometimes there's just no place so you can't bring that. I, I recommend that 30 minutes is not really long enough. So you want to get people to know you because every time you take your eye off of the audience and onto that PowerPoint, it's a disconnect. And in a 30 minute talk, you don't have enough time to stay connected. The more time you stay connected, the more business you will get, the more relationship you will build, the more rapport you will build and et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, and Murphy's Law, whatever could go wrong will grow, go wrong. That's right, Lisa. And too distracting. Absolutely, Karen, that's right. But guess what? In here, in this world, we can use PowerPoint, we can use pictures, we can use video. Now, why the difference? It adds interest. I went to, uh, and I was telling some of you this last week, I went to a... Um, an event that I usually go to in San Diego. CJ knows of the event. He's from San Diego, Women's Wisdom. And usually they have about 60 people, sometimes 80 people, as much as 80 people. It's a women's luncheon. And I've spoken at it several times, but there's, some, you know, the um, founders are just dear, dear friends of mine. And so they brought it online. Now I don't go every month because that's a long drive. That's like three hours there, four hours getting back and three hours there, you know, it's like a day of it. Well, they brought it online and there were two speakers that were speaking. One of them, there was 103 people, by the way. There, so I would say that was big success. So there was two speakers. One speaker brought PowerPoint and, the, uh, and they're both famous speakers. I'm not even gonna tell you who they are. And the other one did not. And when you're in a sea of a hundred people and it's picture after picture after picture, cause they didn't use the webinar version. They wanted the meeting version. You get lost, you get lost. All right. So you have to put it in speaker view, have everybody put it in speaker view. So the speaker is big or use a PowerPoint. So it adds interest. Otherwise, just your little face among everybody else's with a yellow line around it because you're talking loses interest fast, no matter what they're talking about. So add a little video. And everybody, let me just double check before I do the video. Okay, perfect. Okay, 
All right, so this is a video. Some of you may have seen it. I show it every once in a while. Oh, it's one of my favorite videos. And it is old, okay. All right, if it, <laughs> 1968, but it's, but it's that good. <laughs> This is the city. <laughs> Los Angeles, California. Some people rob for pleasure. Some rob because it's there. You never know. My name's Friday. I'm a cop. I was working the day watch on a robbery when I got a call from the Acme School Bell Company. There's been a robbery. There's been a robbery. <laughs> yes, sir. What was it? My clappers. <laughs> Your clappers. Yeah, you know those things inside a bell that makes them clang? The clangers. That's right, we call them clappers in the business. A clapper caper. What's that? Nothing, sir. Now, can I have the facts? What kind of clappers were stolen on this caper? They were copper clappers. <laughs> And where were they kept? In the closet. Uh-huh. You have any ideas who might have taken the copper clappers from the closet? Well, just one I fired a man. He swore he'd get even. What was his name? Claude Cooper. <laughs> you think that? That's right. I think Claude Cooper copped my copper clappers. Kept in the closet. You know where this Claude Cooper is from? Yeah. Cleveland, that figures. That figures. What makes it worse, they were clean. Clean copper clappers. That's right. Why do you think Cleveland's Claude Cooper would cop your clean copper clappers kept in your closet? <laughs> Only one reason. What's that? He's a kleptomaniac. <laughs> Who first discovered the copper clappers were cut? My cleaning woman. <laughs> Where are Clifford? <laughs> that figures. Now let me see if I got the facts straight here. Cleaning woman Clara Clifford discovered your clean copper clappers kept in a closet were cut by Claude Cooper, the kleptomaniac from Cleveland. Now is that about it? <laughs> One other thing. What's that? If I ever catch kleptomaniac Claude Cooper from Cleveland who caught my clean copper clappers from kept in the closet, yes, I'll clobber him. <laughs> oh. Okay, so you can have a lot of fun with some videos, so, so try it. All right. <clears throat> okay. So number six, naked authenticity, naked authenticity. And I don't mean to ever show up, of course, to a speaking engagement uh, naked, but I'm talking about authentic, being real, right? Showing your real truth, showing your real side of you. And again, I don't mean bringing out skeletons in the closet. I just mean your values, your core values, what you believe in, what you love to do, your hobbies, let them know who you are so they can connect with you. So I'm a woman of faith. Everybody that knows me knows I'm a Christian and I, I'm all about bringing God to more stages. And that's it. I mean, I make sure that I tell people, but I don't preach and I don't tell them they have to be. I just tell them what I am. Also, I love dogs. So for me, it's right, you know, it's God, my husband, and dogs. I mean, dogs are right up there in my life. And sometimes it's God, dogs, and my husband when he's in the doghouse. But people know that about me. No, I've never had any children, so that's why the dogs kind of right up there. So whatever it is for you, maybe you, you know, maybe it's children for you, maybe it's grandchildren for you, maybe it's creativeness, whatever it is, tell people. Maybe it's skydiving, maybe it's golf. But let people know, don't hide it, and don't be politically correct. 
If you're a man or woman of faith, then forget this higher source or higher power. That's a bunch of baloney. It's God, period. And don't be afraid to bring your faith and your core values to the stage because people are hungry for that now. They want you to just, just, just be honest with me and tell me who you are so they can make a decision whether or not they can relate with you or whether or not they want to work with you. And then there's no guessing and then you don't have people that <clears throat> find out about you later and figure, you know, that it maybe isn't the best fit. So just tell them right up front. All right. Number, okay. Oh, but it doesn't mean being naked, off, nakedly authentic does not mean that you do any of these appropriate uh, activities. I don't mean that. I mean, oh, I'm being real. I'm going to yawn. Uh, no, no coughing, sneezing, or yawning. No picking your nose or picking your ears. Remember, everything's magnified. No putting eye drops in your eyes, and yes, I've seen that. Eating or chewing or chewing gum, please. Would you go on stage chewing gum? I hope not. I hope not. <clears throat> walking around, trying to talk and lead, walking around, that's very distracting. Typing on the keyboard, talking on the phone, talking to people in the background. You know, somebody comes in and interrupts you. I mean, it's going to happen, but you try to minimize all that. Uh, not, you know, allowing your family to come into the room and interrupt you. Dogs barking. Yes, I'm guilty. Guilty of that one. <laughs> All right. So number seven, sell with stories. Sell with stories. And there's four stories that I recommend that people share in their presentation, even on an online presentation. So if you know what those four stories are, go ahead and put them in the chat box. Yes, go ahead and put them in the chat box. What are those four stories that I teach? And I just taught this at my one day, so it should be fresh in your mind. Yeah, Dragnet. Yep, that's right. Okay, bye, Renee. Story with a lesson, professional story. What else? There's two more. There's two more. Funny story, that's right. All right, one more. Professional success, yes, a success story. So professional success, emotional, and story with a lesson. Good job, give yourselves a big hand for that. Excellent, we're almost complete here. All right, so, oh, I already said it. There's four stories that must be. <laughs> yes, that's true, awesome. All right, so again, these are the uh, seven ways that you can become a mind-blowing speaker. We spelled out uh, actions. So audience participation, camera-ready friendly, trust and rapport, invitation to take the next step, over provide overwhelming value, naked authenticity, and sell with story. So you might want to take a little screenshot of that. All right? So we are going to stop our share, and we are going to open it up to our coaching now. All right, so I'm going to call you in the order that I saw that you came in. A few people came in. Um, a few people came in, and I think I got you at the, at the end there. All right, so we're going to start. Now, remember, this isn't, a, this isn't the pitch session. This is where you can comment, ask questions, get some coaching, tell us where you're speaking, okay? All right, so we're going to start with CJ because he was the first one here. And you can all open up as long as uh, it's reasonably uh, quiet where you are. If you have a little noise, you can always mute yourself. But I'm going to unmute all of you, okay, so we can all be together. You're all unmuted. All right, CJ. Hello, hello. Hi. I'd love to share a couple wins with you. Sure. Uh, first of all, I have been tracking my speaking ever since working with RV. She's one of the things she recommends is to track the, where you speak and so that you have those numbers. And so I've been doing that the last couple of years. So I know how often per year and all that kind of thing. And I have done, this is crazy. I have done 60 speaking types events so far this year. Six uh, my whole last year was, uh, let's see, oops, two year, 86. I did 86 in all of last year. So far, 60 this year uh, for a total of 201. 
speaking wow. engagements that I've tracked. Wow. Uh, I've hit over 200. So that's a thrilling win. And then um, this last weekend was my birthday. And so I used that as an opportunity to promote my book uh, as a free giveaway on Amazon and through my mailing list and social media and asking uh, my clients and through people participating in that, it drove up my book to number 11 on the bestseller chart of Amazon over the weekend. So wow. I'm, I'm, I'm officially, I can say that I'm an Amazon bestseller. So Yay! these are my wins. Yeah. I'm super excited. Thank you so much. I'm going to drop a link in the chat window where you can see where I'm speaking mostly on my podcast and a couple networking, virtual networking events that I'm leading. And I made a page for the RV community where you can see those. So I'll drop that in the chat. Okay, drop that in. Thank you, CJ. Thank you so much. And also, just for everyone, <laughs> keep track of your speaking engagements, all right? Every time you speak, even if it's a five-minute showcase, now I've got a self-introduction for 30 seconds or one minute. We're not counting that. But, like, I count this class as a speaking engagement. So anytime you're speaking five minutes or more, jot it down, keep track of it because it's really nice like that when we can celebrate you and it's really uh, rewarding. So keep track. All right, good job, CJ. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. We would sing, but remember what I said about the singing. <laughs> <laughs> that <would> sound good. <laughs> okay, Jackie Phillips. Hi, Jackie Phillips. Hi. Phillips Wellness and Nutrition. Um, my, I, I teach for uh, foster kinship children's education at Riverside Community College, and we've just gone online. So I'll be doing my classes online starting in three weeks. And my question is, how do I get myself lighter and brighter? I've tried a lamp over here to the the, my right, which I can't do it on my left, and that didn't work. You put it in front of you, Jackie. I can't put it in front of me. I've got a window there. Okay, is the window shades open? Because natural light is the best. Is the shades open? It's shutters and they're open, but maybe I should just open it up without the shutters. Open them all the way. Can you open, can you pull the string and have them? Try it right now real fast if you yeah, can. Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll do one of them because I can get that easier with my monitor. And you can let me know. The natural light. You see my natural light coming in from this direction. Same with CJ, but if you yeah, can't, yeah. then, then uh, not a lamp, but one of those big round <laughs> lights, professional lighting. Okay, that didn't work, Jackie. I'm darker. Yeah. <laughs> <Not happened>. <laughs> Actually, it's brightened up. Has it? Yeah. yeah. To me, yeah. it looks dark. I think it's darker. On the left side. Well, it is yeah. dark. It's it's dark. Okay, you're going you're gonna to have to do two, one of two things, either... Um, you can time it where the light is coming in the brightest, pull up the shades all the way, or you'll have to buy some sort of light. And I don't mean a, a, a lamp, I mean a professional camera light that's in front of you with showing. And like, I'll show you, like I have a couple professional lights. Did you see those? Whoa. Oh, okay. Now those are old fashioned, I've had them for years. But they have new ones, like Lorena has a, a new one that's the round thing, you know, those round lights that you have, and you can put your um, phone inside of it. Those will work, too. Yeah. Television oh, studios use at least three points of lighting. Don, what? One, television studios use at least three points of lighting, two in front and one uh, above and behind you. Mm. I don't know about the behind because that can do weird things. Yeah, it's, it's high behind you, so it's lighting the top of your head and shoulders. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a light above me, and then I have the natural light. So, yeah. So, work on that. Go on Amazon, Jackie, and um, look for some light. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right, next we're going to – oh, Karen had to leave. Uh, Renee and Jim Lid. Okay, Liz, you're up. This has been very, very valuable for me, RV, because tomorrow I'm doing a workshop and I'm doing it on Zoom. And thanks for sharing information as, as it relates to how to engage your audience, because I want to engage them, especially using the chat, putting your hand up, 
And so I'm really looking forward to being more prepared for tomorrow's workshop. Oh, Thank good. You. Yay. Good. And you've got really good lighting, Liz. Do you have I do. You know what I have? I'm, like, I'm at my desk in my office and the two windows, I've moved the drapes aside and this light is coming in. It's all sunlight. It's, it's beautiful. It's, it really works. makes I you I don't have any brighter. other lights on. Just a second. Yeah, you don't have any shadows or anything. That's nice. It's a good spot. Good job. All right, Jason. Uh, my quick question is relating to those quizzes that you posted up. I really like that feature. Uh, I've seen in a couple of other presentations. Is that a feature on an upgraded Zoom subscription or does that? It's just a PowerPoint. It's just words on a PowerPoint. Okay, I've seen presentations uh, where, uh, I don't know if it's through Zoom, but uh, our moderator wants to put up a, like a, a, a poll that we could click and answer. Um, and I was pretty, you know, being that you brought up audience participation, that was a great feature. Where did that come from? Is that off of Zoom or was that something created? That, the poll feature is on Zoom, uh, but I have that turned off because I don't want to, I don't want to use it, but I just use, I've just used PowerPoint to make it fun. But the poll feature is interactive between the, the audience. Okay. Is that a so the free? Yeah. The free version has the chat feature, which we use today. If you get a paid version, then it includes some other features that you probably don't need. Yeah, I, I have the paid version. Uh, I just have that turned off. Okay, but that, would that be something you still would encourage or is that? You know, try it. I never tried it, you know, um, you know, but try it. I'll try okay. it. I'm into, I don't know, CJ, have you tried that poll, uh, polling version? I have played with it once. Uh, I've seen other people do it. it. You have to go into your settings and turn it on in order for it to show up. So again, back to the website, there's a lot of settings that they have, which in a way is great that they leave most of that off until you want it. And then you can go in and turn it on. Yeah. And then it adds the button to the bottom of your Zoom control panel. So it's good they do it that way to not overload everyone with all the buttons all at once. Uh, and you'll have to play with it because once you click the poll button, it takes you back to the website for you to set up the question and answer. So it's a little bit of a process, but yeah. you can walk through it. You can figure it out, but you do have to turn it on first. Sounds great. Okay. Thank uh, you. All right, Jason. Good question. All right. We're going to uh, Kay in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Kay, you're up. You're fro Kay, where are you? Where'd you go? There you are. Hey. Yes. Yeah, it just went off. I don't know. My speaker is going up and down. So my turn? Yes. Okay. So I haven't done any speaking engagements lately. I'm pretty well known for spe having speaking because we're always um, in some kind of a group setting. And, and I'm also known for doing quizzes. So I was considering doing a, a Zoom with some of my guests. And, and having some kind of, um, because that would, they would be my practice group actually <laughs> for a Zoom presentation. And we would, I was thinking about uh, having a quiz with them to see what they learned on Safari, which should be actually very interesting. So um, before I actually go out and say, okay, here's my link, I'm gonna do a Zoom. I wanted to do it with past travelers who I, who I know and who I know would have interaction with me. I think that's a great idea. Always test, do test. I love yeah. it. Now, when is your, when is, I know you've postponed most of your trips, but when is your next trip uh, that you're gonna take people to Africa? Hopefully it'll be November if it's, I have to cancel that one the next year, but right now I, I haven't canceled my November trip. I have a group of six. Okay, okay, good. Well, I hope you can go. It depends on the government there, right? Whether or not they're allowing uh, people to come in. Yeah, it depends upon the flights if they're actually going in and out. And it also depends upon what the government is doing as far as this whole crisis and, you know, where they are in this crisis. Got it. Well, good luck. November sounds like it's far enough away, but you never know. You never know. <laughs> okay, all right, Bill, the sexy man with a beard. <laughs> <Is this sexy? laughs> I just don't know. I just didn't like. I like it. Does your wife like it? Unfortunately, both my wives have died. 
Oh. And twice widowed. Uh, last week you talked about a website for uh, resources. I didn't get that down. What was that? What website is that? For this group here, we have a website for resources. Uh, you mean CJ's? Is that I think he means mean? passionately speaking. Oh, sorry. Okay, so um, why don't you write it in the chat box for me, CJ? I yeah. sure will. Yep. Passionatelyspeaking.com. Password is star, all lowercase, S T A R. There's over five, uh, over 750. Uh, recordings audio recordings okay good but yeah go ahead and put it uh, it's all lowercase star cj lowercase the capital letters won't work okay excellent anything else bill did that did you get that i uh, know uh, passionate speaker passionately speaking well oh, passionately speaking okay Okay, dot com. Dot com? That's for, that's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Password star. Uh, what was I talking about, a star? Password star, S-T-A-R, all lowercase. It's in the that's chat. What, like passionate speaking star, is that what you're saying? No. Okay, so when you go to the um, archives, you'll pick the recording you want to listen to, and it'll ask you then for a password. And it's S T A R on the recording. But I think you mean the hey, website. Why don't we just do this? Why don't I just show everybody real quick? Why not? Right? Let me share my screen. I mean, it's like we're using all this technology. Why don't I? Let me see. I'm in my PowerPoint. Let me get out of there. And I'll just show you real quick. It's really easy. Okay. So here it is passionately speaking. Do you see that? Passionatelyspeaking.com. It looks like this. Now, you can scroll all the way down. Look at all these recordings, ladies and gentlemen. Look at all these. You can scroll all the way down, and you could kind of put in a topic, like let's say you wanted to know more about stories. Then all the topics about stories that have stories in it will come up, right? And then, you let's say you want to listen to this one. You click on it, and you put the password right here. Do you see that, Bill? I uh, really can't. But I say it's not that good. Let me see. Okay. And, and then here's the recording right here. That's it. So you just start. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Passionately Speaking. Or we speak. Okay. So that's one way. The other way is you can click on the months right here, any month you want, and click on there, and then you'll get what happened that month. Uh, March, you'll get the four for March, right? This is a good one, the Ten Commandments of Networking for the speaker, but it's a little, doesn't uh, apply right now. <laughs> okay, but anyway, uh, Bill, if you need any more help than that, we'll, uh, we'll just do a separate call together and I'll help walk you through it, okay? Thank you. All right, perfect. Okay, so I'll call you right after uh, this. All right, we still have some time. All right, Lorena, you're up. Lorena, do you have any questions, comments? You're muted. Okay, maybe she's not with us right now. Okay, let's go to Lisa Thornton. Hello. Hello. I am going to, in the future, well, I'm not doing any public speaking as of yet, but um, I would like to do more speaking in the CBP meetings. And because notary publics, the subject matter, there's a lot of little sub subjects in there that uh, I wanna share with our group because most people think, you know, notarizing is just go before the notary, sign the paper, get the stamp and that's it. And most of the time that is, but there are a lot of little nuances that go along with that, that the person's not aware of, uh, that make for a lawful notarization. And so I am going to create probably at least 10 different five minute and 10 minute uh, presentations 
that highlight each of the various topics within um, being a notary public. So that's what I'm looking for, uh, forward to for the future. Nice. Well, you're coming to the Create Your Speech in a Weekend next, yes. next weekend. Not yes. this weekend, but the next weekend. We'll work on that, and I'll put you on the speaker list in May. Okay, great. All right, perfect. All right, let's go to Ed Phillips. Why, thank you. Uh, I was lucky enough to uh, be on a uh, guest on a talk show, a radio talk show this week. Yeah. Uh, Sharifa Hardy, who is a local Long Beach person who ran for city council here. Uh, she was a remote fourth, but she's really concerned about the community and she loves, uh, loves the folks here in town, it has a talk show. Uh, if you're on Facebook, everybody, Sharifa Hardy, uh, and she's look, always looking for guests. There were a few too many people on to, uh, to really make it work great on Zoom in an hour, but it was fun. I did a little bit of my emotional control tools where, you know, you've got anger and sadness and anxiety and uh, fear and worry and uh, just taught everybody in like a two minute little, little break. That was fun. And on uh, this past Friday and every Friday this month, I'll be doing laughing yoga along with uh, Dewa Adiwisama, who is a, a Balinese uh, mm. uh, laughter yoga instructor, who is really cool. So if you are interested in that, I'll put my Facebook in. I also, and this isn't speaking, but I finally got up a business page on uh, on uh, Facebook, and, and you can probably search it, uh, Edward Phillip, leader, healer, uh, hypnotist, hypnotherapist. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, good. I didn't realize we have three men here with beards. <laughs> 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 and you I, just wanted me to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I love wow. that laugh. I love that laugh. But um, Edward goes back, uh, I've known him for over 16 years. He was at one of my very, very, very first live events called Speak Your Way to Wealth. So we go back that far, 16 years. So good job. And you haven't changed at all. <laughs> so great. all right, Thank you. Go, let's go to Richard. Richard is one of our newest members in our community. So Richard, yeah, hi, hi, welcome. Richard. Hello everyone. I'm kind of feeling naked now. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> I feel back, left out. <laughs> you'll come back next week with a beard. <laughs> uh, it doesn't grow out that much though. But anyway, can you? So I, I'm. I've been in Toastmasters for about five years. Been speaking. That's that's the only speaking I've done. And uh, last time when I was on your one day. Uh, you talked you talked about the stories. Can you elaborate on those for me so I could work on that a lot, a lot more? So you have professional success, emotional, and lesson. When you say elaborate on the stories, what do you mean? You mean like teach you how to tell the story? Or what, like what exactly? Because I didn't catch it last time. Oh, okay. Just so a little bit more. The professional stories about you earning the right to be the expert that you are. Uh, an emotional story is just tugs at the heartstrings. It can be funny or sad. The uh, story with the lesson is um, we don't tell the lesson. It's kind of like Aesop's fables or something where there's a lesson, a motto. Okay. They always write what the motto is. Well, you don't. You let people develop their own. And then a success story is a testimonial. Okay, testimonial. All right. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Good, Richard. Thank you for coming. All right, so Katarina left. Don Hayward, you're up. Don, are you still with us? Yep, I got to get off mute and oh, okay. unhide myself here. <laughs> so I'm the opposite of the, of the beard. I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> we have our own club. We're good. Okay. Just three of us. We balance out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, just uh, enjoy being part of the group and uh, appreciate everybody's input. Thanks. All right, great. I'm glad you're here. 
And uh, where did Brenda go? I had her next. Uh, she had to drop off. Okay, no worries. All right, Ardina, you're up. <laughs> Hi, RVE and everybody. <laughs> um, good training, as always. I always say that. You know, um, I was just thinking that, wow, I really haven't been speaking anywhere, but sitting here thinking about it, I, I've done three um, interviews, radio um, interviews, <laughs> and I also spoke once last year at our chamber, the LA South Chamber. So um, I'm actually kind of getting excited about this now, especially, Hi. you know, what we're in, you know, we're kind of being forced in this direction. So I'm looking forward to the Zoom um, tomorrow and Thursday, but I'm in the process of putting together a training course that I want to um, train on Zoom. Good. Um, so it's gonna require a lot of talking. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm such a behind the scenes person, but you know, um, it's like you said, it's just time to get out there and tell your story. It's time. You've yeah. been you've been hanging out with me for almost a year now. Yes, uh, I have. <laughs> push the little birdie out the net. <laughs> and you're coming to the create your speech in a weekend too. So we'll we'll have it. You'll feel better after that because you'll have the system. Okay. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And we have Jean. Jean from Iowa. My dear friend Jean. Hi. Hi. I just experimented with my lighting. So I'm, I've got my window in front of me. Oh, good. Well, you're How's looking that? good. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you mind putting up your um, acronym again or just telling me what the letters are? Um, okay. So action, everybody tell her action is for audience participation, oh, yeah. right? Oh, is that action or audience? Actions is the is the word. Okay. A is for audience participation. So what is the C, everyone? Camera, Camera position, position friendly. friendly. Camera position friendly. friendly. Right. And the T. Trust and rapport. Trust and rapport. And I. Trust and rapport. Okay. And rapport. The I. Invitation. 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 The O. Overwhelming value. value. Good. The N. Naked authenticity. Mm -hmm. Right. And the S. Selling, Selling with, with stories. stories. Right. Very good. So thank you, Jean. You just helped everybody to drive it at a deeper level for them. Good All job. Right. All right. Anything else, Jean? Nope. Okay. So I'm going to come back to Richard really quick before we end because we're right at 503. So we're doing good. Tell everybody um, what you do since you're new to the community. Introduce yourself. Okay, so I, I've been in uh, concrete. I do concrete masonry for about, it's been 15 years now. And and just what happened now with the whole economy and whatnot, everything came down to a close for me and just uh, rejuvenated myself, starting a new, I've been, as mentioned, in Toastmasters for about five, six years. I've had I've been in a personal development journey for about 10. So now I have all this wisdom within me and you know, I just said, you know what? Let's start uh, putting out videos mm -hmm. with everything that I, you know, it's been introduced to me and then also start a speaking career. And I was always told about scope, uh, get a coach. And Carol Feely is my good friend. And she mentioned uh, RV. And then finally she got, I don't know if you guys met Siraj yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, so he's the one that put me on the one day Oh, good. we're off good friends and then from there I just said hey I got you know this is a great start yeah. oh wonderful good <laughs> well you're all right where you need to be all right are you, Jackie are you are you clapping are you saying goodbye okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay great all right well thank you all for being here today we'll have another good one for you next week if there's ever anything i could do for you during the week don't hesitate to reach out to me all right so have a good week remember get out there and speak even online even virtually and remember when you do speak to always speak with passion good night everybody bye bye thank you Arby. thank you all right. Thank you, Arby. Good night, everybody. Hi. Hey, Zoe. All right. Night.